G'day, Ollie here. This is the hole number one for the seven mile beach disc golf course. I'm gonna take you through a walkthrough of each hole. Key pads and baskets haven't been installed yet. So this is hole one, a 55 meter par three. We'll come down to the right. about 70 metres or so, I haven't measured the distances yet. So I'll talk a little bit about the lead up to this course getting installed. Um, I've been working with the Clarence Council for about the last five years, trying to find a place for disc golf to get into the um, Clarence area on the eastern shore. We've only had one course in, uh, in Australia up until about 2018 when Bernie got installed and then um, soon after yeah so Point Mena was the first in 1985 as a 9 hole that got upgraded to an 18 hole over the years it's held the Australian Championships a few times uh, well regarded as one of the best courses in the country and for some reason we haven't been able to get another course in until Bernie put one in in 2018 um, and then the next one after that was Wallaby Hill on a private private property there is a little um, six hole course down at uh, down at River's Edge Campground um, Unplayable at times when the campers are campers are in their in their masses um, and a bit diff accessibility wise not very accessible so it's not a super easy course to go and play unless you're actually staying at the campground. All right, this is a dual tee pad or a dual a bit of an intersection here. That's actually hole five. And we're going to go over here to hole three. This is hole three pretty straightforward yeah so river's edge little six holer um, the Hobart Disc Golf Club got incorporated in 2019 and that's that's soon after I started playing um, we got that club incorporated and I put in a submission to the Clarence Council when they were planning for the Lauderdale um, tip site, the old Lord of our tip site, to turn into a recreation area. I put in a submission for disc golf to get included, and that was that was included in the plans, a nine-hole course, and that's kind of what got me started with um, my involvement with uh, lobbying the council to get a disc golf course put in. So, although it got put into the plans. Um, we still haven't actually seen anything done with that yet. The site hasn't been touched. So they've got on the plans, they said that uh, works would start in 2025. So they gave it like about a five year, five year estimate on completion. And that's next year. But in that time, um, we're here at, at the Seven Mile Beach Pine Forest. So just mentioning the other 
course that we've got in Tassie, which is the Hobart Disc Golf Club installed. And that was, I was heavily involved with lobbying the Glenorchy Council to get that one in um, at Jim Bacon Reserve, a little six hole course. Um, it's been a real challenge to try and find available land that isn't already earmarked for certain activities or protected for certain reasons like native flora and fauna. Um, Jim Bacon Reserve is right next to a um, protected area with the, the blue devil plant which is only grows in that particular piece of bushland so we weren't allowed to use the bushland as much as I would love to because it was a great spot in there with trees we could only use the open grass area so that that section well that little six hole course would have been fantastic as a nine hole course with some wooded holes but we've had to just keep it wide open in the in the open grassy area uh, which makes a nice little practice course for beginners or people that want to go and practice some hunting and approaching and things like that or field practice so this is hole four thread the needle through the gap there was a little there is a little hyzer line on the right side of the fairway uh, not super obvious off the tee but it is there so that's hole four and now this is going to lead us back to hole five yeah so uh, I got it was probably about 18 months two years ago that I actually was walking through here I actually went for a run and I decided to come for a run through here just to scope it out to see whether it would actually be suitable for disc golf and then while I was here I gave the um, gave the contact that I had at the Clarence Council a call I we'd already looked through about um, I mean, we'd looked through a bunch of different locations for possible disc golf courses um, which included the first one was Wentworth Park um, nice and flat again a few trees around but it was decided that area was too busy with um, walkers, park runners um, things like that quite a busy area so already heavily utilised although nice and central it would have been a great spot but safety wise probably wouldn't really fit in more of a multi-use area and um, then we looked at Richmond Park, which actually already had a consultation done and they thought about trialling a little kookaburra on the left, it's hanging out on the tree. He was here before. They actually already trialled a six hole course, or well, we trialled a six hole, hole course at um, Richmond. But the Richmond Advisory Committee were a little bit hesitant. Um, they pushed back a bit unfortunately committees and things like that they, they don't really like change um, as much as we, we think that we're adding to um, adding to the area by bringing an inclusive sport um, which is passive recreation anyone can come and use it for free they uh, Sometimes people just like to be against things for certain reasons and it's just because they don't want to see change. And it's probably a bit of the unknown as well because it's not a well-known sport, not well-established. So, yeah. This is hole six. This is going to be the advanced tee. Um, we've been testing it. We came out here with a couple of beginners and this is one of the hardest holes in the course, which... I'm still trying to figure out what to do with the T position. Uh, that's a very advanced position back there. This is still going to be like an intermediate kind of T area here, which I've been trying out. There's a couple of little trees that need to um, need to be trimmed in the fairway, I think. Um, to open up a little bit. Yeah, so getting to Seven Mile Beach, we um, spoke to the council about it. They they had this place earmarked for a um, sports uh, precinct, 
which would have like a couple of AFL grounds and a couple of soccer grounds and a big indoor sports stadium. Uh, but that ended up getting moved to next to Baby College, which is uh, Rokeby High School, or the old Rokeby High School. And um, so this area became vacant, as in they had no plans for it. And it's a originally was a eucalypt forest. Uh, if you look back at historic photos of it, and it um, got cleared and uh, used for pine, pine plantation over the years. Which, as you know, pine uh, so pine trees are introduced as in not native and not super great for the uh, not super great for the soil quality. Quite acidic. So not a, not a lot of other stuff grows in here. So biodiversity wise, like there's nothing really that's super protected in here, nothing of great um, value, great natural value. So um, it was also it was also deemed to be a bit of fire risk given all the fuel right here, right next to the Seven Mile Beach community. They knew they they had mentioned that they think it's a bit of a fire risk um, and it's being underutilised, it's only really being used for dog walkers, people going running, uh, kids riding their bikes in here, building jumps, unofficial like huts and things like that and, um, and being used by teenagers and stuff that like to come out and have a party in the middle of the night and light a bonfire and, most of the time I think it goes unnoticed or, un or harmless, but occasionally fireys have to come in here and put out a fire. So being underutilised and not really used for any designated purpose created a great opportunity for a disc golf course. And contractors that came in and did the work for us did an excellent job. They, uh, did in, they did in about three weeks. I think they, in, they estimated about four weeks and they smashed it out. I think they put on a few extra guys and um, got a lot of work done. So this is hole seven. Originally my plan was to have the tee on this side, which is quite a tight gap. But since all the scrub's been cleared out of here, this seems like a more inviting, generous kind of gap for tee position. So we're just going to test that, see how it goes. We pushed the fairway nice and wide onto the right to give um, give the ability to continue playing forward even if you hit a tree early. You don't want you like climbing in the sticks and scrub and getting poked in the eye and stuff, which is not fun. This video is going to give a good um, indication of what what the course looked like very early on when it was constructed, and and over time we'll see how it kind of develops and settles in, and get a few volunteers in here, and we'll hopefully do a bit of um, course maintenance and maybe build a little elevated tee somewhere or something like that put some benches in um, yeah and then hopefully more people will be able to come out here and enjoy it so hole, we're on hole 7 so it's a bit of a booming forehand off the tee or a turnover if you can do it and then a bit of a hyzer straight to hyzer backhand I've put these poles in, which are just a star picking in the ground with a um, PVC pipe over the top so we can actually play it and test it. Hopefully they stay where they are while we're doing that. Uh, no one's come along and pulled anything down yet. So I am in two minds about where to put this basket position, whether to push it off to the left over there. We'll keep it right in the middle. 
I think there's a bit of a natural mound in the middle which kind of your shots are probably going to be leaking into the left over here generally so if we can um, yeah this one might be a good one to put a little small elevation in the basket it's one of my favorite holes that that hole I scoped that one out basically from the very start um, it was already a bit of a natural fair way through there just needed a little bit of cleaning up it's come up really well a lot of the others were just kind of carved out of the bush and they've evolved but that one was already the shape was already there so this is the established path which is going to take us from hole seven down to eight and and then from eight back to nine Ducking in a quick look at uh, Fort Pine. I just think the council are, uh, council are unsure what to do about it because it's taken a lot of creativity to uh, build it, a lot of time and effort. Kids cut down all the trees to get the logs to build the fort, but it is a bit of a hazard. Just look at that. Big screws poking out. See, we rotted out and just left these big screws in here. You hate to get gash, gash the back of your leg on one of those. Be cool nonetheless. And they are putting a probably putting another floor on it, whether that's a roof or not. Those red markers are where we put um, some tape in and we kind of sussed out a bit of a, a hole through here. We decided to leave that one because of the fort. We didn't want to actually have to disrupt that one in the initial phase because um, we don't want to annoy the kids that made that fort. But now that the council have been here and have seen it and have seen the liability that it is, unfortunately it probably will go. But being pine and not treated, it's going to rot away eventually anyway. So it's inevitable. So this is hole four. No, not hole four, it's hole eight. But it is a par four. We've got two lines. There is a line off to the left there through that um, off to the left through that fallen branch. And then there's a line through that side. Being a par four, the basket's up and slightly to the right. I think getting off the tee, you do want to be a little bit to the left. If you're on the right, then um, it kind of pinches you off a bit. So this is a this is a bit of an easier par four than the last two holes, just because it's a bit more open in terms of there's no little saplings and things around. Um, this was done. So one, two, three, four, five, eight, and nine were all done uh, within the first week. 
absolutely smashed it out really quickly and then I came and had a walk through and had a look at it provided some feedback and said look can you just leave as much green stuff as you can a few of the sapling leaves of the sapling pines and then we can pick which ones to take out because it just adds a bit of greenery to the course um, and what, what it's what it's actually done is given us the option to have a six hole beginner loop because one two three four uh one two three four five and then seven eight oh, it'll be a seven hole loop seven eight nine will be um they're gonna be great little beginner beginner course or beginner holes because they're more, more open ones six and seven is the most diff the two most difficult on the course even if we shorten them they're still more wooded so we've got to make the decision um, whether we make those holes easier or whether we just divert the beginners away from it and i think i reckon um, diverting them away from it and then having a beginner tee on those holes and calling out the in intermediate nine so having a beginner seven intermediate nine and an advanced nine which will be the longer tees the course has also been designed to have uh, future amendments made to it in terms of most of the baskets and most of the pins have space beyond and behind so they can be extended uh, which would give us the option to have two tees and two pin locations on every hole with all the combinations um, of being short tee to short pin and then short to long long to long and long long to short will give you five uh, sorry four unique hole options on each hole so you have 72 unique holes in an 18 hole course and of course with just nine currently they'll give us 36 unique options this is going to be the advanced t for hole nine this is a big hyzer to the left just a stock hyzer hole finish off the course the beginner tee is going to be somewhere around about here the advanced tee is about 80 85 this is going to make it the uh, beginner tee about 60 which i think is a pretty around a 60 70 meter like is a is a pretty between 50 and 70 is pretty good for beginners There is the option to actually push that advanced tee back a little bit, but that's probably going to be a later on problem if we decide that we want to extend this one because the whole the basket position can't really be extended beyond here. It could be shortened, or it could be moved to the right or to the left, but there is a path directly behind it, so can't really go much further than that it's a great hole either way this one was already naturally here all right that about does it Thanks for coming along, walking through the course with me, hearing a little bit about how it, um, how it all began, where it all came from. Um, it's been a long journey and it's finally it's fantastic to actually see. Yeah. These are some of the interesting little huts you see around that kids have made. Eventually we'll open some shelter we we'll put in here and or picnic a uh, um, bench there.
access right now is uh, right off Woodhurst Road. Bit of an unofficial car park area, which I think the council want to close off because it is open to any vehicle to just drive in as, as they please. So getting uh, getting some official parking would be great. We could get at least probably between 30, 40 cars in here. Hopefully we'll see some uh, some amenities like toilets and a um, toilets and a playground, barbecue, that kind of stuff. Alright, that about does it for me. Um, time to go home and spend some time with the kids.